church and family, wherever you are at, we're so glad that you can join us online. We've got an uh, in-person meeting, meeting happening every Sunday, 4.30 at the United Church. So you're welcome to join us for that if you're around. Um, but thank you for joining us for this special Thanksgiving service where we're going to just look at um, the year and Jesus' faithfulness. So I know it's going to be a super blessed time. So every nation, we want to be family, we want to celebrate people, we want to walk with people, we want to see God's kingdom advance in every sphere of society. And it's just incredible hearing testimonies um, of people stepping out, of people meeting Jesus. Um, so it's great to be part of family. And we want to also just celebrate with those who had a birthday or an anniversary or a new job or a graduation. So shout out to all of you guys. Kubis, my husband had a birthday. So I hope that he felt special. We had a lot of festivities in the house. So happy birthday. And for all of you guys out there, we trust that the year to come will just be the best where Jesus would be real. So I've got the privilege to, to just dig into a couple of announcements. Um, first up, Leadership 215. It's really exciting. It's a nudge up from your normal Bible school. This is a theology course. It's done globally in so many nations through our Every Nation Seminary. Um, it consists of 12 modules. So that includes things like apologetics, church history, Old Testament, New Testament, hermeneutics. So it's theology. Um, if you are keen to join us next year for this course, um, you're welcome to contact Bryn or Freddie or just email every, anyone at the office. It's going to be 100, 100 rand a month, and this requires some commitment, okay? So um, if you need more information, you, you're welcome to, to contact us with regards to Leadership 215. And then secondly, we've got our Happy Packet project happening again. Because of COVID, we're doing it a little bit differently. So we're asking you to please do donate and contribute 185 Rand. Um, you can EFT that or snap scan um, to our bank details with the reference of Happy Packet. And we are trusting to send out many packets to the grade R's and the grade ones at the Devon Valley Primary School. So that's a, a community that we've been really involved with in so many different ways. So we'll put the packet together with a lot of stationary gifts, some exciting stuff that the kids will then receive in the new year. So please join us um, for that. We've got a young professional social happening today right after the service. So come join us 4.30 at the United Church and then the young professionals will head out for a, a lacquer kair. So join us for that. Um, December, I can't believe it's December already. It's crazy. Guys, we are heading into the home stretch of the year. So if you want to find out about church, what's happening, feel free to just uh, head over to our website. All our services and all the information will be posted there. So that's us from announcements. I'm going to transition. And um, yeah, we really trust that as we reflect over this year, that yeah, that we would finish strong and that we will see Jesus revealed. So yes, we'll see you guys soon. Come visit. Good morning, church. I'm excited to be with you today, and we've got a different service, which I'm excited about. You're going to be hearing a whole lot of testimonies, and it's so important for us as we end this year to end with gratitude and thankfulness. Everybody around us wants the year to end 2020. We've had enough. We want it to end, but something important happens in our heart if we can have gratitude and thankfulness towards God. I believe it's going to set up your 2021 in the correct way. So open your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 17. And I'm going to have a look at one of the forgotten virtues, which I believe is so important, and that is gratitude, thanksgiving. It was a big deal in the Bible, and it should be a big deal in our lives. There was a Boston consultant in America that uh, was researching the emerging generation into the marketplace. And he went and he found one word by the employees that described them. And that word began with an E. So he went uh, to the university and he asked uh, the students to describe themselves as they enter into the marketplace. 
And they came up and they said, oh, it must be energetic and excellent and enthusiastic. But the word actually was entitled, how other people saw them. And entitlement isn't very attractive. I don't know about you, but when somebody around me is grateful, I'm drawn to them. When somebody is entitled, it kind of like pushes, pushes me away. But that's not just their fault. It's not just the millennials' fault. It's the generation that's gone before them that has created their environment for this entitlement just to grow like never before. And uh, I found myself um, just the other day, my kids came and they'd both written a pic- uh, drawn a picture and they wanted to know, Dad, which picture is the best? And I wanted to celebrate both of them, but they were adamant which picture was the best. So I had to choose that picture. And I chose the picture, and it was actually my youngest's picture was the best picture. And uh, the response was actually great. I was expecting a bit of moaning and complaining, but they were like, oh, okay, that's good. And, and they just ran on, and, on and they you know, did whatever they were doing. Yet, when we think that the, we can't say no to people, or every person who runs the race, everybody needs to get a prize, And maybe that's come from maybe families that have been divorced and can't say no to their kids and have been working so much that they've just got to give their children everything that they possibly want. It creates an environment where we just get entitled rather than grateful for what we do have. So this is really important. The opposite to entitlement is gratitude. And that's why we've got a moment of thanksgiving. You're going to hear some some testimonies. I pray that you'll go back and you'll look at this year and you'll see how has God come through for you because he has been coming through. And this changes our heart. It literally moves our heart back into the light. It makes our mind come alive again. So read with me in Luke 17 about a powerful account where Jesus takes gratitude very, very seriously. Verse 11. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Ten guys, lepers. I mean, this was a painful disease that they had, physically painful. They could go to bed at night and a rat could like eat their finger and they, they wake up and it's pain. Literally It's emotional pain. Um, Leviticus 13 said when they walked in the streets, they needed to shout, unclean, unclean, so people could hear that they were coming. And when they heard that they were going to come, they were moving to the other sides of the streets, moving away from them. They were rejected. These guys probably hadn't received a hug and love in years. It was their biggest, biggest need to be healed of this disease. Verse 14, we pick up the story. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return to give praise to God except this foreigner? Church, imagine this. Their biggest dream in life had just come true. The emotional rejection, the physical pain, life given back, a second chance. They'd been healed, and only one comes back to praise Jesus. I've got a question for you today. Will you be the one, or will you be the nine? Will you be the one that comes back and recognizes when Jesus comes through for you? Now, the Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes down to us from our Father in heaven. Do you know, He's the one who gives you breath in your lungs. He's the one who does it. Or were we like maybe these Jews where we get familiar and we just expect, yeah, Jesus has got to come through. I mean, he's died for me. I deserve it. And we expect him that he has to come through. And so then when he does come through, we're not even grateful. I'm not sure why the other nine didn't return back. Maybe they just knew that their job now was to go to the priests and they were just so excited with what's just happened that they were going to go and find their family. Only one remembered who did it. I can imagine Jesus standing there going saying, hey guys, you had a need. I was here. God sent me. I came through for you. Don't forget who has just done for you what you could not do for yourself. An amazing moment. And the challenge for us is, are we going to be the one? Are we going to be the nine? 
This guy fell down on his feet and worshipped. Can we thank God when God comes through? Can we give him the praise, the honor, what is really due his name? Can we thank other people, those people that serve you? Maybe it's a coach, a sports coach, a teacher, a kid's church worker, your connect group leader. Are we grateful or are we just expecting that this should be done for me? When your family serves you, do you just expect it? Or are you grateful that this could be a gift that the Father is actually giving you? I want to just uh, um, have a look at Romans 1 verse 21. But before I get there, I think of my own life and I'm ungrateful at times. I really am. My, good, my, my thoughts are ungrateful. My heart's ungrateful. And it's because I've forgotten that God is the one coming through for me when I didn't deserve it. But Mark, you're a pastor. How can you be ungrateful? I'm ungrateful because I'm a person. I think all of us have times where, where we, we forget who is coming through for us. That ungrateful attitude says, I want more and I want it now. You know, like the prodigal son. You know, just give me what I, what I deserve and, and forget about the relationship. But the gospel is so different. The gospel restores our gratefulness. The gospel is amazing how it opens our heart to come alive, our mind to come alive again. The right response, church, to a gift is thankfulness. When we get given a gift, thankfulness wells up inside of us. Think about that moment when you got something that you didn't deserve, that, that something that you've been dreaming about. There's an there's a overwhelming thankfulness that rises up inside of us. The greatest thankfulness we can have is to the gospel, the gift of grace that was given to us. Now, we think, thank, we think that thanklessness is not a big deal. But Roman, uh, sorry, Romans 1 verse 21 says, Although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and f their foolish hearts were darkened. Church, when we are not thankful, our hearts become darkened. Pride starts to rise up. Sin starts to take place in our life. And we don't see people correctly. We don't see God correctly. We don't see our situations correctly because of that pride and that sin that's stepping into our world. You see, a lack of gratitude robs the person of their glory. And it also puts us in a light where we convince ourselves that we would be fine without them. We somehow think that it's us. It wasn't that other person that actually helped us. Tim Keller described thanklessness as plagiarism. He said, can you imagine you find this incredible uh, manuscript up in the attic and you take it down and you publish it on, on your behalf, although you didn't write it. And a few people think that you're great and then your uh, publisher comes back later and says, great, will you give us volume number two? Will you write a second book? And you can't because you couldn't do it. See, friends, Thanklessness towards God robs God of the glory of what He has done. But also, it causes us to parade ourselves around as being self-sufficient. And we forget that it is God who comes through for us. Let us remember who He is. God gives grace to the humble. And He wants to show Himself strong on your behalf. Don't cut yourself off because of that unthankful attitude. You know what I love about the gospel, and I think in 2020 we can be definitely reminded of this. When I think of the gospel, it reminds me, even when I was dishonoring God, He came through for me. In 2020, even though you think you look back at some hard times and you wonder where was God, He was coming through for you in many other different situations and circumstances. God was coming through for you. So how do we respond? I want to close with this. Decide to turn blessings in to praise. We used to sing an old song. I love this one. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. That's is my only time I'm ever going to sing. All right, so there we go. But every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back into praise. Because when I don't turn it back into praise, it turns into pride. Praise is a protection against pride when we give God what He truly deserves. It makes our hearts come alive, that our hearts are not darkened. Church, as we end this year, can we be like Paul in Philippians 4? He says where he learned to be content. He learned the secret to being content. And that was in Christ, he could do all things. Let's think back to this year. What can you be grateful of? You're, you, you've got a car to drive. You know, don't be ungrateful that 
it, it's not what you want or, you know, my kids don't have rooms, you know, separate rooms or my countertops in my house aren't actually what I want. And, you know, you've got a whole cupboard full of clothes, which you chose, okay, by the way, which you've got nothing to wear, all right. But yet we, we become unthankful. Gratefulness says thank you. There's nothing wrong with aspiring to more, but gratefulness keeps our hearts content. And the Bible says contentment is, mu- is, a, is a great gain. It's a lot to be gained in your life by being content. So I've shared a little bit differently today, but I want you to take some time. I want you to listen to these testimonies that are coming up. And can we respond this year in praise for what he has done? Think in the small things. How has God come through for you? Not the big things, even just the small things. Why is it important to share that? Because our sharing and our expressing, you, you, you can't not express gratitude. You can't not express thankfulness. It's got to come out. So that's why Revelations 12 verse 11 says, They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto death. The word of your testimony gives glory to God. It positions us correctly and allows God even to come through even more. I was reminded I was moving um, a, a, a few months ago, and I found a piece of paper that I wrote down my very first testimony that I read out in front of people. I was blown away again at God's mercy, His healing, His power, what He's done for me. And I want to encourage you, don't be scared to share your testimonies. So church, let's listen to these testimonies. Let's give God the glory and thank Him. And then remember and maybe share what God has done for you. God bless. Enjoy the testimonies. Hello, family and friends. It's a massive privilege and opportunity and a blessing for me to share my testimony tonight. God's testimony. Thank you so much. My name is Berger van Rooyen and I've been studying accounting for the past seven years. Yes, seven years, since 2014. I did my accounting degree. I got it after three years. That was great. Didn't get into honors though, so I had to redo a few modules. Got into honors, did honors for the first year, back honors. Just to give a little bit of context, our module framework suggests 55 hours a week of study, which is approximately nine hours and nine minutes per day, six days a week if you obey the Sabbath. And uh, that's productive hours. Very (laughs) interesting suggestion. But anyways, first year of study went well. It was a great year for me. I had great community. uh, But I ended up failing basically one of my favorite modules with a very close margin. Massive setback. I didn't really see that coming. I knew it was going to be tough, but it just didn't happen. And uh, in that in that time, our family was going through a, a difficult time, some uncertainty and transition phase with my dad resigning at, at his job and doing applications, etc., etc., moving homes. It was it was complex and, and interesting. But in um, any case, went on, decided to do a, a second year of honors, and uh, after that year, it was also crazy. A lot of weird things happened. <laughs> I wish I could share a bit more, but yeah, you know, I only got permanent accommodation in April. I had to do some part-time work to be able to study, etc. Ended up really not doing well that year. My prayers were pretty low. And going in, I thought this can still happen. But at the end of the day, I failed the module that I passed in the previous year, first time round, without any rewrites. Doesn't make sense. Very interesting. Anyway, I failed that one auditing and then there was the thing of having to decide to go through for a second round. Uh, For a third round. Sorry, you know, I even lose track of what year is which. Decided to go on, do a third round, thought, okay, cool, everything's stable. They need COVID. But sure. And here comes, here comes the testimony. Context was crucial, but the testimony is more important. There was a lot of uncertainties. I was afraid. I wasn't sure of where things were going. And um, it didn't seem as though I was going to ever pass. Like There were times where I thought this is never going to happen. But through community and through prayer and through hard work, at the end of the day, God's faithfulness remained. And I held, I held fast onto His promise of, of never, never, never leaving us. And also the fact that he is a good father that was difficult for me because i didn't experience it but his word said it was true so i learned that god's 
context or God's perspective of what is good is different to ours. We can't understand what is good in the moment. But here I am, seven years later, I heard about a week and a half ago that I passed on us after the third round. And it's a massive, massive, massive testimony of God's faithfulness when we hold on, when we abide and we obey. So that's my testimony and encouragement. Obey, uh, abide and obey and trust God and His faithfulness and He will come through. It is fact. It is truth. You can't change that. Praise God. Amen. Good day. We, we are, are the Williams family. family. Good day, church. We just want to share a testimony of our little boy, Morgan. So in 2014, Gabe was three years old. We decided we're going to get another sibling for him. So 2014, we fell pregnant and 13 weeks into the pregnancy, we miscarried. And 2015, we fell pregnant again and unfortunately miscarried again that year. 2016, we fell pregnant twice and unfortunately both pregnancy ended up in miscarriages. So we decided we're gonna take a break and in 2019 Gabe started um, saying things like he's gonna sing the song to his little sister that his dad sang at his education. So me and Gabe decided okay we're gonna give it another go and we shared it with our connect group and they started praying for us. And in August, I started sharing again to 50 plus ladies about our battle with miscarriages and uh, infertility. Um, so, church camp, we prayed again about it. And to, uh, the 31st October, we um, discovered that we were pregnant and we were so excited. Uh, December 26, 2019, I was at work. I had a patient in labor and I started bleeding. And at that moment, my faith left me and we didn't believe and we just thought everything is just the same as the previous three, four times. And we let our church, family and friends and connect with know. And um, my colleague he helped me and she prayed for me and everyone just stand in the gap for us. Uh, that really didn't affect that time. And amazingly, God blessed us with Morgan. He was born in 1st of June, 2020. And then my mom named him Morgan. And 20 October, she passed away and Kara's dad, nine, um, she passed away 19 October and Kara's dad, 18 November. So we believe that God really just knew what we needed in 2020. When we look at him, we just can realize that God is good and he's faithful and just and he wants what's best for us. And um, we just want to just encourage you that uh, Jesus is our living hope and never lose hope. And just always believe that he, he loves us endlessly. Thank you. Today, I just want to share a short testimony of just hope that there is to be found in God. So. To all of us, it's been a very tough year, and at one stage in my quiet time, I just asked the Lord, said, Lord, just please strengthen me, um, show me you are here, and you know what's going on in my life, and, and that I can have uh, my hope and my trust in you. And um, then uh, an artist phoned me and said, she has this wonderful painting that the Lord placed on her heart to give to me. So just one step back. So that morning with the quiet time, the Lord just reminded me that faith, hope, and love, those three are, are like in Roman, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, are so important part of our relationship with Him. And He just wanted to share with me with regards to hope. And He just said that a symbol of hope is a, a dove. And that um, it was when Noah sent out the dove, it came back with an olive branch. And that was just... A symbol of God's hope and provision after the storm and, and that he will fulfill his promises and so the artist phoned me and said well she has this painting on her heart and she wants to give it to me but you know there's somebody who might want to buy it but she's she has this urgency in her spirit to to bring the painting and the next day when she bought the painting it was a stunning painting of five white doves flying it was just so profound just the Lord confirming what he had said in my quiet time, just that hope is like a dove and 
um, then a random other person just confirming what he had promised me. And there's a quote that um, it's sort of a almost like Hebrew 11 that it says, hope is the ability to hear the melody of the future and faith is the willingness and the courage to dance to it today. So I just want to encourage all of you, even though we're going through a tough time, hope is still our lifeline. God is our trust in him and that he will make all things work out to the good for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Thank you. Church, weren't those testimonies just fantastic? I'm encouraged uh, listening to them. I pray that you'll be encouraged too. Why don't you take some time to just think and remember what Jesus has done for you and how he's come through for you this year. Remember, your testimony is powerful because it gives God the glory. And our praise protects us from pride because we are positioning ourselves correctly. So why don't you uh, take a moment, write it down, then and share with a friend. Share with a family member what are some of the things that Jesus has done for you this year. And I believe it will take you out of the pit. It will it'll take some, just some scales off your eyes. It will make your heart, if it's feeling dull, come alive because you'll recognize where Jesus has been coming through for you. Friends, God bless. Have an incredible week. And remember that Jesus has been coming through for you more than you realize. God bless you.
Great. 